the house of God. Amen. One more time. Amen. Amongst the brotherhood that loves to talk about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Most precious thing in the world is our Savior. Amen. Because we just won't get to visit with Him in time. But we're going to visit with Him in eternity. Amen. For all eternity. Yes. Talk with Jesus. Amen. I'd rather be talking with Jesus than talking with the devil in hell. Amen. <laughs> Afraid he wouldn't have a very good conversation. So I'd much rather speak with God. Well, let's uh, ask God to anoint the words tonight and, and anoint my mind. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful tonight for another opportunity to come into the house of God. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you bring in your spirit. Lord, your anointing, Lord, into our midst, God. Lord, anoint our minds, God. Open up our hearts, God, that we might receive the word of God, Lord, so that the word can take root downward and bear fruit upward in our life, Lord. I ask tonight, God, that you open my uh, the Bible Bible, God, and let my lips of clay, God, speak with joy and happiness, God, of the Word of God. Lord, let me share, God, what's upon my heart tonight, God, and let it be a blessing unto the people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen, 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 amen. There's so many good things to talk about that... There you go. That... Uh, Wow. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Everything. Where can you not go in your Bible from Genesis 1 to the end of Revelation and not get excited about something with Jesus Christ? It's just, it's awesome. So I had, I was pondering this afternoon about talking about the blood. Have you ever wondered about why we say, Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Why? Why we string all that together. It's got a purpose. Yes, it has. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sins of the world. Yes. Yes. Over in Peter, and then I thought, well, maybe we'll go to Second Peter. <laughs> but I'm not sure and talk about our eyes what we should look forward to with Jesus but then listening to the songs I said you know what we might just talk in the book of St. John and show y'all where the Ten Commandments are in St. John chapter 15 See how we can govern our life. Yes. Amen. So you want to look at that tonight? Yeah. We'll do that. St. John 15. Any one of the three lessons here will be short. So it's a good thing y'all sang long. <laughs> That's old Brother Harold singing another song or two. <laughs> It's all going to be in the same chapter. All right. Chapter 15 of St. John. All right. Oh, St. John. Yeah, St. John. <laughs> Not first, second, or third John, but in St. John. And if somebody has verse 1, go ahead and read it. I am the I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Okay. He says, I am the true vine. Which of the Ten Commandments you think that matches up with? The first one. I am the Lord thy God. I'm the Lord thy God. I'm the true vine. There's no other Savior you need to look for. I'm it. I am the Lord thy God. 
Lord your God. You don't have to look for any other God. Nothing else to satisfy you. No other vine to eat from. It's me, said Jesus. I am the true vine. And that's how He came to fulfill the Old Testament. And He fulfilled it by being the true vine. I am the Lord thy God in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, He said, this is the proof. I'm the true vine. Amen. Ain't that awesome? Woo! Woo! Glory, glory, glory. Oh, yeah. Praise God. So we'll read second verse now. Okay. If somebody has a second verse. Uh, every branch okay. is in me and beareth fruit and take it away. And mm -hmm. every branch that beareth fruit, he poureth mm -hmm. it and they might bring forth more fruit. More fruit. So every branch, <laughs> he says, if it don't bear fruit, Take it away. Now which commandment does that fit? Thou shalt have no other gods. He said if it ain't producing something attached to the true vine of Jesus Christ, he said we're going to cut it off. We're going to get rid of it. We're going to throw it in the fire. It's a false god because it is not providing the fruit for your spiritual life that you can eat on every day and get excited about Jesus with. Woo! Shahaya! Hallelujah! He said, I'm the true one. I'm the true vine. And the reason you know I am is I bear fruit. I bear fruit. He said, when you get with somebody else, if you get with a false God, they're not going to bear fruit. They're not going to match up with the Word of God. They're not going to bear it. It's time to cut it off. And throw it into the fire. And burn it up. Get rid of that old false image. Yes. Get rid of that idolatry. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Glory, hallelujah. Woo. And he says, you, once I purged it, mm -hmm. now we're going to check again and see if it'll bear some fruit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to check it out again. So the husbandman, Jesus, he just keeps walking through the garden, looking your tree over, your yeah. spiritual tree, yeah. to see whether or not you're bearing fruit right. yeah. or whether else you got some yeah. other idea. God said, I'll cut that off. There ain't going to be no other gods before me. There ain't going to be no lands not bearing fruit when you're attached to me. God says, I'll cut them off. Woo! Blessing, Lord. Boy, howdy. Yes. Uh, my uh, Teresa, let him finish his uh, message and then. I'm trying. There it is. Oh. I was trying to find number three. I've written so much in my Bible, I had to try to find my spot. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we just read it, though. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh it away. That's no other gods. Right. And then there's a colon there. And then he says, And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it. Right. And that is not take the name in vain. Right, right. When he purges it. Mm -hmm. yes. He wants a clean name. Yes, yes he does. He wants a holy name. Holy name. So when he purges the, the, the limb, the vine, to see, mm -hmm. then he's checking to make sure that you have not taken his name in vain. Right. right. And so he purges that yes. because he says, if you got my name right, he said, "Then it's going to bear. It's going to bring forth more fruit." Wow! See, if you're if you're lifting up the name of Jesus in your circumstance, in your situation, guess what it's going to do? It's going to bring forth the name. It's not going to take the name in vain, but it's going to produce a name that bears fruit. Produce a name that bears fruit. So that's number three. Okay. So now we're looking for number four. four. And that's in verse three. Somebody got verse three? Uh, now, you got it. Yeah, go ahead. now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. That's right. Now ye are clean. That is Sabbath day rest. Right. You want to rest? 
Well, you, do you rest when you're all grimy and sweaty and dirty and filthy? No. <laughs> you don't get much rest. No, you don't. <laughs> God says, if you got my Sabbath day rest, the fourth commandment, yeah. He yeah. said, then you're going to be clean. Mm -hmm. Ye are clean through the word which I have spoken yeah. unto you. Yes. Get in your prayer closet and your study and let God speak to you. Right, right. And when He speaks to you, while you're resting in the Sabbath, or resting in your prayer closet, while you got rest, God said, I'll clean you up. I'll clean you up. I'll make you clean. That's the fourth one. The fifth commandment is in verse 4. Somebody got verse 4? Abide in me and I in you. As the branches cannot bear fruit, of itself, except it abide in the vine. Mm. No more can you, you except you abide in me. So we see here that this is honoring your father and mother. He said abide. abide. Because when you honor your father and mother, you have total dependence right. on a mother and a father as a child. And if you abide in the vine, that means you're depending on the vine. Right. To give you life. To help you bear fruit. You have that dependence. And that dependence is the mother. Honor your father and your mother. He said if you do that. He said. Uh, uh, a branch cannot bear fruit of itself. When it gets cut off. There ain't nothing there. just going to dry up. Dry up and that's it. So if you don't honor God. Guess what happens to your little branch on your little tree? Yeah. It gets cut. And it just dries up. Just dries up. No fruit. So we're looking for number six here. And we're going to have to jump down a ways. And we're going to go to verse nine. Somebody has it? Go ahead and read it. As the Father has loved me, so had I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Amen. That's the sixth commandment. Thou shalt not kill. Don't kill. He said you need to love. And he says if you love, like the Father has loved you, he said, then you're going to continue in love. Yeah. He said, I love like the Father's loved me. Amen. And he said, I continued in love. And I loved you. When you was just a sinner, I loved you, Jesus said. Right. So I didn't kill you. <laughs> Thank God he could have wiped us all off and started over. But as the Father had loved me, so have I loved you. He says, you need to do the same. That's the sixth commandment. So the seventh commandment is going to be in verse 11. You got that, Brother Harold? Yeah. Yeah. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remind in you, and that your joy might be full. There we go. There we are. Now see, if we're going to have a relationship here, he said, my joy, your joy. Notice there's a relationship. This goes with no adultery. Right. Don't have no strange affairs. No. Jesus said, if you're going to be in love with me and, and I'm in love with you, He said that your joy and my joy might be full. full. Right. No adultery. No. No. Don't think on other things. No. You know, It's more than just a man and a woman adultery. you got spiritual adultery. You want to do something else besides spending time with Jesus. And Jesus says, if you come spend time with me, you make me happy. If you make me happy, I'm going to make you happy. Right. And then our joy will be full. Amen. Amen. Instead of him waiting in the prayer closet going, where's he at? Been waiting, 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 waiting. <laughs> there ain't no full joy there. No. No full joy at all. So... Uh, uh, God behooves us not to have adultery. Right. That was number uh, seven. Okay. 
See, we could talk about the human joy. We can talk about divine joy. We can talk about how this uh, uh, divine joy and the human joy, when you get your joy joined to the joy of Jesus Christ, guess what? You birth exceeding joy. (laughs) You ever been so happy with Jesus? You just didn't even know what to do yourself. (laughs) You didn't know whether to jump, run, scream, what to do. Just lay down on the floor and kick your head. You didn't know what to do. Because once your joy joined with the joy of Jesus, then you produce exceeding joy. How, how do you measure exceeding? How many buckets you get out? You can't get enough buckets out for exceeding, can you? No end. No end. That means no matter how many buckets you get out there, God says, oh, you didn't get this. Here's some more joy. (laughs) And oh, by the way, you better bring a few more buckets. I got some joy back here too. It's exceeding. It's more than you can keep up with. Amen. And we think that, well, if I go bowling instead of... of, uh, 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 spending time in my prayer closet, I'll find some joy. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you get out there and you score badly. Everybody's in a bad mood. And you come home in a bad mood. Mm-hmm. Where's all that exceeding joy you're supposed to get out of bowling? Right. <laughs> yeah. Didn't happen. Or go to the ball game or whatever uh-huh. you wanted to do when you had a set time to meet Jesus. But if you meet Him, oh, He says, I'm waiting with joy to see you. Right. You ever been so joyful you just waiting on somebody to get there? You just couldn't wait for them to get to the house? You're just so glad to see them. Amen. It's kind of joy Jesus got. And then when you join your joy to His joy and you get exceeding joy, Amen. You just over. Yeah. <laughs> Go running around the new city. <laughs> okay. We are on... we got to do number eight now, don't we? Okay. Number 8, let's drop down to verse 16. We're in St. John chapter 15, yeah. verse 16. Okay. So if somebody has verse 16, go ahead and read it. This is number 8. You have not chosen me, but have chosen you, and ordained you, and ye should not go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of my Father, Give it to you. May give it you. Yeah. Everybody likes to quote the end of that verse. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, if you say it in his name, he's going to give it to you. Right. And they kind of ignore the first part of the verse. Exactly right. The first part said, Ye have not chosen me first. Jesus said, While you was a, yet sin- a sinner, I chose, chose you. you. And so since He chose us, that word chosen, you have not chosen me, that goes with stealing. Thou shalt not steal. Don't steal a choice. Let Jesus do the choosing. You ever try to tell somebody what they should do? (laughs) You steal their choice from them? Well, I don't think you should do that. You should do this. That's stealing. You stole that person's choice. And you're making the choice for them. And Jesus said, "Uh, uh, uh-uh-uh, don't you do that. He said, because if you steal the choice, then you won't be able to ask in my Father's name and Him give it to you. Because you done stole your own choice. He said, but you need to get it right. He says, I'm the one that chose you. I'm the one that ordained you. That you should go forth and bring forth fruit. I'm the one that chose you to be attached to the vine. He said, I'm the true vine, the first commandment in verse 1. He said, since I chose you and I put you into the vine, you're grafted in. And I have an ordained plan that you bring forth fruit. And that your fruit would remain. You don't throw it off early. Remains till it's ripe. If you do all that, he said, then whatsoever ye shall ask of my of the Father. Yes, yes. In my name, the true vine. 
in my name, mm -hmm. he may give it to you. Yes, but see, we got some, we got some things we got to do. We can't steal choices. Well, Jesus, I think you should have done this in my life, not what you went and did. <laughs> I know y'all ain't never said that. Y'all are angels. Y'all ain't never confronted Jesus that way. Jesus, now you you know, if you'd have left the choice up to me, this thing would have already been over with. It had done been settled. I had the cure and the fix already in mind. Jesus said, don't you steal my choice. He said, I'm the one that chose you. I'm the one that ordained you. I'm the one that said uh, that you should go forth and bring forth fruit. I'm the one that said your fruit needs to remain. Jesus knows when I need to get right. You ever wonder why you're in a situation with somebody and it keeps dragging out? Dragging out? Dragging out? You're like, God, is this situation ever going to end? When are you going to get me out of here? Jesus said, let me look at your fruit. Oh, it ain't ripe yet. you got to stay a little longer. Oh, boy. Yep. Oh, you mean I've got to hang on? Hang on. <laughs> so the situation drags yeah, out. Exactly. Boss is on your case another oh, week. Oh, drags boy. out. He's on the case for a third week. Man. You're like, Jesus, I'm ready to get out of this fire furnace. He said, ain't no fire furnace. I've ordained you some fruit. I'm checking oh. to see if it's ripe yet. Yep. you got to remain. In your situation, oh, till your fruit gets right. Yeah. Woo! Oh, oh, oh. We want to steal a choice, don't we? And say, I choose, get out of here. Bye, boss. And just go, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to set this up with your new boss because you didn't have no right fruit. Oh. Amen. You ever changed jobs and had the same problem at the next job? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> God just set you all up again. And the reason is because he's looking for some fruit. And he wants it to remain. You remember he talked about how the, the fig tree cast forth her fruit early? Oh, yeah. yeah. No. Nah, don't get rid of your fruit early. You need to let it remain until it's ripe and tasty and, and uh, edible. If you ever bit into a sour green apple, you'd be saying it should have hung on the tree a little longer. Yeah. <laughs> or bite into a sour grape you'd be saying that should have hung on the vine a little longer but we know that naturally but when God puts us in a situation and says Tim you need to hang on and remain a little longer I'm going I'm ready to shake this thing loose shake this situation loose I'm tired of this sourness God says if you remain long enough I will change it to sweetness and then once it's ripe, he says at the end of that verse, then whatsoever ye shall ask, the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. Because see, you done learn to remain and remain and remain and just have joy with Jesus and remain, have some more joy with Jesus till you're exceeding joy. And then by the time you reach full fruit, gain some patience. You've gained patience and everything else. And, and what are you going to ask the Father now? Father, can I hang around a little longer? Yeah. <laughs> I found out that if I hang on long enough, I get sweet. Right. Amen. You know how hard it is for some of us to get a sweet attitude? Come on. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, no. oh, boy. It takes a while for some of us to get a sweet attitude. Oh, Amen. It don't take very long to push up that fruit of sour attitude. And then say, here, eat some of this. <laughs> Let me shake that off and give that to my boss and see how he likes eating that sour apple. Jesus said, you do that, you're not going to be able to ask the Father in my name and receive of the Father. So that was eight. So let's look at nine. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Well, I know it's here somewhere. Ah, so the next page of my Bible's why. We're in 15 and we're in verse 25. This is the ninth commandment. 
St. John 15, 25. 25. Somebody has it? Go ahead and read it. But the heat but comes in past the word and money be full that written their hair law they should hate me without caste. That's right. They hated me without a cause. Ninth commandment is thou shalt not bear false witness. That's hating somebody without a cause. Now here I am connected to the true vine, grafted in, saved, going on for God, doing the best I can, putting on fruit the best I can, and then I want to look over at some other branch and bear some false witness. <laughs> Just a little hatred, a little envy. Mm -hmm. Their fruit looks a little better than mine. Their job's a little better than mine. Their car looks a little newer than mine. I can do it a little better than they can. I can do it a little better than they can. God just let me. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That's false witness. Mm -hmm. And God said, you bear false witness. He said, that ain't going to work here with the vine. Uh... If you're going to have the word fulfilled. Right. Wow. But this cometh to pass. Yeah. Over this length of time. Yeah. He said the word might be fulfilled. That is written in their law. Mm -hmm. That it be fulfilled. Now what does Jesus want to do with the law upon our hearts? He wants to write it upon the tables of our heart. Mm -hmm. So here we've borne fruit. And Jesus said, okay, it's time for me to start writing my law on your heart. That it will be fulfilled. In other words, we'll find the finish here. It's one thing for me to quote the law out of the Bible. It's another thing when my heart speaks it. When my heart speaks the law, it's fulfilled in me. And he says, I'm doing all this, coming to pass. That the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. And he said, but you got to be careful of this. They hated me without a cause. Mm. He said, if you don't watch it, yeah. bearing false witness will stop me from fulfilling mm. writing on your heart my law of love. Wow. Now why? After all we've been through, hanging on with fruit to remain and everything we've been through here. And we'll go over them real quickly again to make sure we got a picture. Well, after all that, why bear false witness saying I can, I can bear better, better fruit than somebody else. I can do it better than somebody else. I, 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 <clears throat> I know more than they do. I can sing better. I can do better. I can run better. I can skip better. Wow. And then Jesus said, he was fixing to write the law in my heart to fulfill it. And then he pulls back his fingers and says, you ain't got it yet. You, you, you don't understand. You cannot bear false witness and me take my finger of love and write my words of love upon your heart. I'm not going to do it because I cannot write the law of love when you're not showing love. You're bearing false witness. The opposite of love. He says, I can't do it. So he stops. But if... If we do not bear false witness, then Jesus promised. He said, I will fulfill and I'll write it on your heart so that it's full in you. Your heart is full. It is fulfilled with my law. Okay, number 10, the 10th commandment is in verse 26. Go ahead, brother. Huh? When the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Woo! That's enough to run on right there, ain't it? Wow. But when the Comforter, yeah. what's the tenth commandment? Thou shalt not covet. What are you going to covet? What do we often covet? The comfort of the world. Right. He says, if you're going to covet the comfort of the world, then the comforter is not going to come to you. Right. If you covet the world, the comfort of the world, 
the pleasures of the world, the comfort, the things that bring, make you comfortable in this world for however long your life is compared to eternity. Then he said, the comforter's not coming to you. You're coveting. But if I deal with coveting, he said, then the comforter is come. Even the spirit of truth. That is a key thing right there. Anytime you deal with the Holy Ghost or the Comforter, yes. it's always about the truth that now is. Right. The truth that's right now. Yes. You have to get honest. Mm -hmm. right. You have to get honest. You know, and if you tell Jesus, this is the way I feel, and I know it's not like you, but this is how I'm feeling. You think he's got a problem with that? He'll say, let me help you with that. Right. You're being honest. You're being honest. I can work with that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he says, while I'm working with that, let me give you send the comforter along, the right. spirit of truth. And truth will walk by your side Amen. to comfort your heart yes. as you deal with whatever it is you need to deal yes. with. The teacher. The teacher. the teacher. Even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the Father. He shall testify. And what's the truth always going to testify about? About Jesus. Always going to tell, tell you. Well, the truth is, you're coveting something out there in the world. But let me tell you, the things of Jesus bring you more satisfaction than the world. See, the Spirit of Truth will constantly walk beside me, comforting me with the truth as long as I get honest. Yes, I got to be honest. You know, it tell Jesus, Jesus, that situation happened, and I'm just mad. I know I'm mad. I know I shouldn't be mad. <laughs> I'm intelligent enough to know I'm missing it here, but I don't see how to fix it. I need the comforter, the spirit of truth, right. to come and walk beside me and speak the truth to me. Yes. Well, here's what how you're missing it in that situation. Here's the bad attitude you got in that situation. See, if, if I get honest, then the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth, will begin to speak truth Amen. and reveal to me yes. where I'm out of alignment mm -hmm. so that I can get back in line. The, just because I'm... Uh, uh, having a problem getting the victory doesn't mean that Jesus and the Holy Ghost and the Father just jump up and run. Ooh, don't want to be around him. <laughs> they came when you was total sinner, no good thing. They sought you out. Right. How much more do they want to be around you now that you have come as far with Jesus as you have? Amen. They don't want to flee and leave you now. So that's the tenth one. So did you you get all those? And the first commandment, I am the Lord thy God, was in verse one. I am the true vine. Right, right. Amen. The second commandment was in verse two. Yeah. Talking about every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Right. No other gods. No. He's not gonna have no dead limbs. Right. The third one is. Woo, y'all could probably talk back to me faster than I could go through my notes here. Third one, not take the name in vain. That's where he purgeth the branches that do not bear fruit. Because he wants them to bear more fruit. So that was number three, not take the name in vain when he purgeth it in verse two. Then the fourth one was in verse 4, abide. That word abide. Yeah. That's the fourth one that is Sabbath day rest. rest. He said keep the Sabbath day and keep it holy. holy. Then five. five is... No, I messed up. Four was clean in verse 3. Ye are now clean. clean. Yeah, Sabbath day clean. That word abide was five. Abide with the father and mother. Honor your father and mother. The word clean in verse 3 was your rest, your Sabbath day, honor the Sabbath day. 
abide in verse 4 was honor your father and mother, have dependence upon God. 6 was in verse 9. Thou shalt not kill, because it says the father hath loved me. He didn't kill me, he loved me. So that is the sixth commandment. The seventh commandment was in verse 11. The seventh commandment was thou shalt not commit adultery. And uh, uh, we do that when we break the joy. He says my joy in verse 11. He says your joy. And when the two joys get together, you have exceeding joy. So he said don't commit adultery or you'll break that joyful unity. Eight. Was thou shalt not steal in verse 16. He said, ye have not chosen me, but I chose you. Do not steal his choice that he has made for our life. Nine was in verse 25. And that's where they hated him without a cause. They bore false witness. We should never bear false witness. And hate without a cause. Right. Right. And then the tenth commandment. Thou shalt not covet. Dealt with the comforter. Because we covet the comforts of this world. Everybody wants to drive a Cadillac. A Mercedes. Everybody wants the most comfortable. Everything of the world. Instead of looking for the comforter. Right. Mm -hmm. Sent from the father. The spirit of truth. Which will walk beside us. And tell us. And communicate with us how that we can overcome. Amen. So, I know it was a sh short little lesson tonight, but I hope you enjoyed it. Yes. It's the most awesome thing to see the Ten Commandments wow. are in the New Testament as well. They're in the New Testament. Most people would, if you said well, the Ten Commandments are in the New Testament, they go, ah. But they're in the New Testament, St. John 15. So, uh, uh, just thank God real quick for His Word. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, for Your Word tonight. Lord, we're so grateful, God, uh, for Your living Word of God, Lord, that ministers to our heart and that encourages us, God, in these last days to run on for You. Lord, we thank You, God, Lord, for speaking to us through the Word of God tonight. In the name of Jesus, amen.